T-Rex cake. Right back here, I have my instructor all ready to go and a lot of work ahead of me, so let's begin. All right, so the first thing that I did was use some rice crispy treats and attach it to the structure. I used it to make the lower part of the body nice and round, the upper part of the legs and also the tail and the head, because in this proportions, the scale, the tail and the head were sort of small to be made out of cake. So I went with rice crispy treats instead as it's still edible and lightweight. So after I was done attaching the Rice Krispie Treats, I did some carving and modeling to the shape. And then I went ahead and set up the cakes on the structure. I used square cakes of about five and a half inches and I had to cut one of them a little piece so it would fit better into the part of the body. And I used that little piece to also add some cake on the upper part of the neck. And as you can see, the top layer of my cakes is really tall. It's like the thickest layer because the top part of the cake is the one that is going to get the most carving. I'm gonna to have to carve the top to shape the body of the dinosaur. And this is what my T-Rex looks like after carving. Now I know that looks a little weird at this point. We need to kind of exercise our imagination to visualize the finished piece. But the ganache is actually going to help us with that. I'm covering the whole thing in white chocolate ganache to make, to def really define the shape and make it tidy and smooth. And I'm using a ganache that is really high chocolate proportion. It's four parts chocolate, only one part cream. And I like to work with a ganache that really hardens, especially so I can work on the cake with the fondant and also for transporting it. It just makes the whole thing a lot sturdier. So this next part is usually the most feared one, which is covering the whole thing in fondant. But luckily for this particular project, I was completely relaxed at this point because, I mean, come on, we're talking about a T-Rex, right? It's full of wrinkles and marks and textures and shadows. So any imperfections or seam marks on my fondant can be easily concealed. And a lot of people ask me for what kind of fondant I'm using or for my recipe, but I do not make my own fondant. I use a commercial brand that can be found in my country, in Argentina, that is called Pasta Vagina. So here I used a milk chocolate ganache to cover my board and kind of give it a muddy effect. And after it's set, I modeled the lower part of the legs and I used fondant for it. I did not use modeling chocolate or any other kind of special modeling paste. I used the same fondant that I used to cover the body. I just attached it to the rod and then used my modeling tools to shape it. Then I moved a little further up where I used some wire to give support to the arms, which I also modeled in fondant. So I left the whole head area for last because honestly I felt it was going to take the longest. So the first thing I did was cover the inside of the mouth with black fondant in order to give it some depth and then I attached the tongue.
Now for the building of the head, I really had to start, look up a lot of pictures of the dinosaur on the internet and kind of observe the anatomy. First I covered the whole thing in fondant and then I just started like building the different volumes, attaching the pieces to the head and blending them and shaping them with the different modeling tools. Again, not worried about any marks as I'm going to be covering them with texture. And I had this Savior Sprinkles, this big round yellow pearls which went perfect for the eyes. So at this point I was done building the dinosaur, it was all shaped and modeled. So now I have to bring it to life and I'm going to do that with texture and color. Now I'm starting with a very mild texture using a silicone mold all over the body. I'm also using my modeling tools to make marks and wrinkles. For a more defined texture of the head and the face, I'm going to be using different shapes and sizes of piping tips and straws. Now the texture helps, but when we really see it come to life is when we add the color. And the first layer of color that I'm adding is a very diluted, very light brown, which you may find odd and said, hey, why brown? Well, I want the brown to really get into those creases and texture marks, but just give it a minute and see how great the contrast looks when the green comes in. So for this first part I painted using a brush and some edible food color mixed with edible alcohol. You can also use vodka or I think it's called Everclear. Um, and then I finished using my airbrush and some other shades of green and some shadows with black. Oh my, and I was so excited at this point, so happy to see it, that I almost forgot a fundamental detail such as the teeth. So I added it one by one, fondant teeth. Okay, so this may be a little disgusting, right? But I had to do it. I had to add the strings on his teeth. I used isomalt and it just makes the whole thing so much more realistic. So that was two days of really hard work and that's a wrap, but I'm so excited. I loved how it turned out. I hope you like it too. And I hope you enjoyed seeing the process. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Lucia Loro Thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video.